What, let's go. What you leave behind is not what's engraved on monuments, but what's woven into the lives of others, Pericles. It's just a part of living in Montana that one sees Tibetan prayer flags adorning front porches and backyards as we move throughout our day. What is the synergy that seems to bind many in our community to the country of Nepal? Mountains, for one. We are all mountain people, and the mother load is certainly the Himalayas, where the sun touches the earth first, so their time zone is 20 minutes ahead of everyone else, and their calendar, 56 years. An additional bond would be our connection with people that are unencumbered and happy, living in conditions that we might view as impoverished. I spent several weeks with Tamang Buddhists from an agrarian, equestrian, mountainous region of Nepal. Their pure joy and love of children, other beings, and life in general was integrated into their ordinary lives. Searching for a spiritual connection with our own mindfulness would be another reason. Nepalis exhibit a devotional, a devotional authenticity that one simply bathes in. My trekking companions, Bill and Maurizio, were two European geneticists that rejected any spiritual beliefs, yet were compelled to visit these mountains seven times before. I found that an early lesson for a Westerner visiting Nepal is that control is an illusion. It seems one can only control your own, emotion, own personal emotions and thoughts and attitudes, so pick good ones. Our guide, Dawa, demonstrated real spiritual level of living and compassionately with tolerance and acceptance as a way of life. Of course, my comments are generalized and developed from a brief visit. These kids, noticing I was wearing short pants, which seemed uncommon, inquired as to where I was from. When I said, USA, they said, USA, USA, you have naked fat legs. <laughs> <laughs> as a volunteer DJ at KGLT, I came loaded up with ball caps and stickers. And this became a fun part of what we left behind and was part of the bonding on the trek with our friends. KGLT was Bill and my connection through music, and that was a core reason I was even invited on the journey. International travel often changes one's self-perception as well as our understanding of our own country. Since returning from Nepal, the changes in my perceptions of compassion seem to arrive like Easter eggs maybe shooing away an insect rather than kill it, or accepting that that terrible driver in front of me is really someone's child, not deserving of my ill will. My Nepal trekking experience was woven with mountainous beauty, endless array of stupas, many prayer walls, hydraulically propelled prayer wheels, and continuously flapping prayer flags, sending all of our blessings aloft. For three weeks of trekking, I felt coddled and swaddled by both the nurturing culture and environment that I was experiencing. Struggling through such an arduous hike for an old fat guy like me um, demanded continuous affirmations as well. Bistari, bistari, or omanio padme om. Slowly, slowly, putting one foot in front of the other just to make it to the end of each day's journey. I found myself comforted uh, and confronted by learning a different way to move through life. I realized I needed to learn more deeply to come to understand love, compassion, and tolerance. Like Anthony Ray Hinton, released from death row, who wallows in joy rather than anger. Or Israeli Yaakov Lifshitz, recently bidding her captor Shalom after her release from Gaza. Seeing how fluidly the Buddhists and Hindus coexist in Nepal is certainly a model for the rest of us. With astounding frequency, I demonstrated to me that spiritually, I must need to be made more aware of how I'm moving through time and space and weaving into the lives of others. My agnostic friend Bill was faced with imminently losing his wife to cancer, yet she'd urged him to take this particular trek compassionate selflessness and love on her part. I could see his reluctance accepting what he knew scientifically was the finality of her life. Bill questioned if my faith was important to me. After having listened to their scientific discussions, I suggested our connection might be from that all life was evolved from a single cell mutation. He rejected this as unproven and directed me towards the unscientific proposal of reincarnation. We found ourselves in different worlds. Many more lessons in compassion, in addition to Bill's wife losing her cancer battle, 
Lost my best friend to suicide recently and another of our family's beloved puppy dogs. I'm continuously challenged to find peace and compassion. And it seems that grief changes shape, but never leaves. On another note, the musical bond Bill and I shared in conversation was as foreign to Maurizio as their in-depth genetic discussions were to me. Perhaps I am missing a dimension of life, Maurizio observed. Me too, I thought. They found solace in science, and for me, the music connection is as vital part of life. Uh, music is how feelings sound. My friend Kathy had correctly informed me that more profound changes would occur after returning from Nepal. I'm experiencing a kind of becoming, uh, more so now than during my visit. My personal journey of exploration and spirituality and music, uh, musicality continues to grow, as does the connection to community. Visitors to Nepal are drawn for the mountains, but remember the people. Numerous encounters with mountains upon mountains have left me as gobsmacked as the graceful people that I met. Wally Lamb concluded, the evidence of God exists in our connections with each other. Upon our return, Bill commemorated our journey by incorporating his textbook illustrations of chromosomes and mitochondria with the KGLT theme you can see here. Again, weaving us together. I would urge you all and the few folks left in the audience that have yet to visit Nepal to crumble to their bucket list longings and just go. You'll never regret spending time or money on a great experience. Additionally, I encourage you to go down the street to the Bozeman Art Museum and visit their exhibit, Himalaya. Some images of compassion and love will never leave my memory of Nepal and truly have become woven into my life. Namaste.